Welcome to the Enlighten Up Podcast, where I am going to take you into a deep exploration of what it means to exist in this current reality. We are going to raise your vibes, open your mind, expand your heart, and dive deep into the wondrous mysteries and possibilities of this lifetime. There's been a spiritual catalyst that has set in motion the awakening process of many across the globe to return to the knowingness of self and unite what has been separated. Together, we're going to bring light into that darkness. We're going to remember the joy of living. But most of all, we're going to turn up the volume of our own eternal power and do the thing we're here to do. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Enlighten Up podcast. Today, I am riding solo for the 1221 portal energies that are upon us tomorrow. Of course, on the 21st, it's the winter solstice. And there's always some really incredible energies that come through at this time. And I'm going to go through today what I've picked up on what's coming through this portal and what you really want to stay open to receiving why it's important that you stay open to receiving these energies. Uh, The 1221 portal is really important. And it's one of the times, it comes during one of the busiest times of the year because it's the holiday season for many of us. And there's just so much going on. It's chaotic. There's family events. There's holiday events. It's traveling. There's just so much going on. And So it can be really easy to miss this portal and you definitely do not want to miss this. Take some time uh, out of your day to do a meditation, just to sit in receptivity mode and to really allow the energies to penetrate your awareness, your field and anchor them in through your root chakra. This 1221 portal, I'm calling the great codes of Sophia. Um, it's, it's a very feminine energy that's coming through very feminine energy. And I'm going to go through some of the notes that I've taken here on what I received. Of course, a lot of this information came through, um, a mushroom journey that I did recently. And I've shared some of that with you on the womb activation that I had. And I don't know what's going on. I am going through a massive upgrade of my feminine energy, an unleashing of my feminine energy. It's been quite interesting. In fact, um, a week or two after, no, it was probably a week after um, the womb activation that I received, I went into meditation to channel in some more information. And there was a lot of sexual energy that came through. And over the weekend, I had a full blown Kundalini activation like I've never experienced before. And I'm going to go into that a little later uh, after we get through the 1221 portal uh, messages. But I had no idea (laughs) that it was even possible to receive that kind of energy flow through you. It's, um, it's incredible. It's orgasmic. It's regal. It's, it's pleasurable. It's just beyond it's beyond, um, So first, let's get into the 1221 portal. And the reason why I was bringing that up is because it's all goddess energy coming through Um, me when I'm going through these activations, when it was the womb activation, this Kundalini activation, it is all goddess codes and frequencies. And I'm starting to understand more about what it 
feels like when you're actually in these frequencies, when you're bringing through the codes, when you've actually activated the codes within you, because everyone has them. So this 1221 portal is important because as you may have all known, I did a, um, a 2023 predictions and I talked about what's kind of coming through for 2023, at least from what I can see and what I understand, um, astrologically as well as intuitively. We do have the nodes changing uh, in the summer next year into Aries and Libra, leaving Taurus and Scorpio, but we do have an Aries new moon solar eclipse in April, on April 20th. And so the energies are already going to start in the springtime. And those energies are explosive. The big energy for 2023 is just, it's a lot of, uh, I want to say there's an uprising of kind of energy within. There's, There's this Mm, fiery, want to kind of stand up for myself, want to declare. Um, it, there's a lot of energy of um, taking action. It's just a really strong energy. And from what I've also heard from others that from what I can see, there's a lot of people concurring with this um, kind of, I guess, astrological analysis, as well as intuitive uh, messaging that I've got is that there seems to be, I want to say a frequency of anger next year coming through collectively. And anger is a much better frequency than fear. Uh, When we think about the scale of consciousness, fear sits at 100, uh, anger sits at 150. And we're just 50 um, points away from hitting that mark at the 200 where we shift from a dis- where where we shift from a destructive level of consciousness into a constructive level of consciousness and anger tends to be a motivator i think anger obviously gets a bit of a bad rap for its emotion its feeling for very obvious reasons it can be very destructive it's very combative it can be um, almost warlike, but, but I think we forget, I think we forget that anger does serve a purpose when it's used consciously and when anger is used consciously and it's honored, it can be very motivating for change. It can be very motivating to start doing the thing you probably should have been doing a long time ago. Um, And because we tend to um, not move through discomfort or challenging situations unless we're forced to, anger often is part of the equation when uh, it's time to make big changes. So 2023 is going to be a year that will bring in a lot of power. A power is going to be awakened in many. A ferociousness is going to be awakened. And ferociousness doesn't necessarily mean um, a a bad thing. Ferociousness to me too is just honing your power in and going for what you want. Uh, Really getting tuned in to what it is that you want to create, what it is that you want to accomplish, and really not letting anything get in your way. Of course, that can also be destructive if it gets too extreme, but I'm talking about that balanced uh, clarity and path of direction that one needs. So this 1221 portal is bringing in a much softer energy than what I think is going to be birthing or bubbling up to the surface in many of us next year. And it's important that we receive these energies because They're going to help us ground and balance ourselves for the year of 2023. So the first message I got was that it's a very soft energy coming through. Uh, The softness is here to mitigate the hardness that is being created uh, right now. Um, It's a mellowing out 
And it is very much needed for what is coming in 2023, which again was reiterated to me, it's explosive. (laughs) So being open, because these are very soft energies, which is a very feminine energy, right? Feminine is soft, masculine is hard. Um, You really need to turn up your receptivity principle over the next few days and allow yourself to receive these codes. The balance here is important because power is very much a theme next year. We're going to see a lot of us discover what our power means to us, what our power actually consists of, where maybe our powers have been hiding, where we may have been hiding our powers, other people hiding their powers. A lot is coming to light around power next year. But power, like anything, has a dark and light side to it. And because we're still going to be on the Taurus-Scorpio axis, Scorpio energy definitely deals with a lot of issues around power. And having these softer energies come in is going to allow us to not be either overpowered or consumed by our power, which can absolutely happen, especially if you're not used to it, especially if you're not grounded, and really allow us to use that power um, like by being in our power. So being in your power is very different than being consumed by your power or being overpowered. And that is what these energies that are coming through are doing. Um, the colors of the energy that I'm seeing coming through are very soft, soft green, soft pink, soft yellow. And I'm also seeing a uh, diamond light uh, coming through at the same time. So diamond, diamond represents the light body and diamond also represents, you know, when we think about the coal is polished into a diamond, uh, that it represents very much like the pearl. So there's something about, uh, I want to say a lot of the hard challenges that you may have been going through there's a birthing or blessing of the gift of the hard work to be received. And it's almost like it's coming online for um, many of us through the receiving of these softer energies. So the dime, it's it's almost like there's um, a celebration of a lot of the hard work that was necessary to get to this point. So the energies are very soft, feathery, like pillowy, pillowy energies, very gentle, very, very gentle. And one of the things that I saw when I saw the soft yellow was I heard a message and I heard the canary sings in 2023. I don't know what that means exactly, but obviously it feels like some sort of truth is definitely going to be a big truth is going to be revealed to us next year or is going to be finally brought to the surface, which when a truth comes to the surface and we, whether you were expecting it or not, there is outrage there is usually outrage, there is anger, there's a lot of those types of emotions that come up. And so it feels to me like this is this 1221 portal is a preparation to mellow the energies out not to I want to make this clear not to mellow your power, but to mellow the transference and conductivity of the power uh, running through you uh, that is going to be awakened. So it's almost like, okay, I'm being given the analogy of um, caffeine. So, you know, when you're drinking a cup of coffee, um, they say one of the reasons why they do the butter, you know, or a high fat milk or something in your coffee is to slow the caffeine release 
into the uh, system so that you don't get hit hard with that caffeine um, high, that caffeine high. And then you have this massive drop after too. So that's kind of how I'm seeing this, that these energies are kind of helping to slow the release of the energies of whether, whether it's the power that's moving through you, the anger, the outrage, uh, whatever it might be. And again, I want to say that some of this can serve a good purpose if used consciously. If you're unconscious, it'll just overpower you. It'll, it, you won't be in power. Your emotions will be. And that's not where we really want to be for um, 2023. So the canary sings in 2023. Again, I'm not really sure <laughs> what that's going to pertail to. Um, I am getting an idea, but I'm not going to say what that is. Um, important to receive these frequencies very much needed. So these frequencies are very much needed to soften the heart, soften the anxiety, temper the anger, and temper the blow. And then I heard Sophia codes, Sophia codes, Sophia codes. The great codes of Sophia crystalline energies are coming through this 1221 portal. And I think there's something powerful happening with the feminine energy. And again, men, this also pertains to you because you have a feminine side of energy, just like women, you have a masculine side. There's something about our feminine energy that's being awakened right now that is very important. And it's, I'll say from my end, what I'm personally experiencing, and I'll be curious, please let me know in the comments below, or if you're listening on Spotify, leave a comment, please, uh, in the Q&A section. But I feel like there's definitely a leveling up happening. Uh, you know, the journey often has these dips, right? These lows and highs, these peaks and valleys. And whatever has been happening in the last month or so has been a very big peak of energy that I've been experiencing. I, you know, I've been on this spiritual journey for a long time. And of course, I've had moments where I've deterred off the spiritual journey. I've completely abandoned it at times. Um, but for the most part, you know, I've been on this journey for 20, over almost 30 years, almost 30 years. And so I am always amazed. I'm always amazed when I experience something drastically new in my journey. And I think this is important to relay because I think sometimes we think we've seen it all or we've heard it all or we know it all or we feel it all or I don't know. I'm sure we all have moments of that. Our ego comes through. We all have one. And this is a really nice reminder for us all to never underestimate what is awaiting for us on the journey, no matter how deep you've gone, no matter how far you've gone or how much no, no matter how many dark nights of the soul you've been through, how many shadows you've slayed, you know, it doesn't matter. There's always more to discover. And what I love about this part of the journey is it's, it's like a blissful part of the journey. You know, I'm so used to the, the healing, the trauma and um, really facing the darkness, but having this experience just a couple days ago, right in the right in the doorway, the gateway of this 1221 portal, which also happened to be when Uranus and Mercury were trying with Venus, Venus was in the mix, not as close, but she's just coming up behind Mercury there. So with there to be this like Uranus represents this flash of insight, sudden awakening, unexpected surprises, uh, you know, shaking things up. And with it being in such a positive alignment with Mercury and Venus, Mercury is the planet of communications, information, um, contracts and negotiations. It, it's, it's truly the messenger of the sky. 
And Venus, you know, she represents the feminine, the divine feminine of the sky. And she is absolutely all about, you know, you think about that empress energy, worthiness and self-love and uh, relationships and beauty and pleasure, right? Because she also rules Taurus, which is all about pleasure. And of course, as a Taurus sun, I just got to tell you that the pleasure I experienced through this Kundalini awakening over the weekend was unreal. I didn't even know that it was possible. My body was moving in rhythms and moves and flows that I had. It's not that I didn't have control over it. I just wasn't controlling anything. I could stop it if I wanted to, but I didn't want to because it was so beautiful. It was like having a galactic orgasm for hours, for hours. It must have been at least three, if not four hours that this went on. And it was, I, I mean, when I came out of it, it, it didn't take long for my body to start shutting down from how much high energy was coming through my body just needed to rest it was like okay whatever we just went through it's time to to, to shut down and go to sleep it it was incredible and i'm curious to know from any of you if you're in the live chat right now or you're commenting later have you had this kundalini experience now i know the kundalini awakening isn't always like this i know that it can be very difficult it can be very scary i've had a kundalini awakening before where it was very scary i had to shut it down because it felt like i was going to explode out of my body and i thought my head was going to pop off um but this was so divine this was pure goddess energy. I felt the true queen energy coming through where I, all I wanted to do was bow down to this energy. Like I just wanted to bow down to it out of the grace of knowing it's true beauty, it's true power. And I learned so much through this activation. I downloaded so much information, which of course is going in my womb of activation, goddess codes and keys to unlocking the universe mysteries. Um, And if you haven't signed up for that, I highly suggest you do because this is so next level. This is more than I ever anticipated. Um, The, what I'm going to create here for you guys is like, orgasmic. (laughs) Um, And I say that not in a way like, you know, when we think of sexual energy, and this is important. And this is this is I'm going to go into this, I'm going to go into this on that course. But our sexual energy is very misunderstood. And of course, we're so programmed with what we see in movies, on TV, and what people tell us and what we've experienced, you know, growing up and all of that. This was unlike that at, like, obviously, there was a similar sense of energy, because there was a lot of pleasure and all of that. But it, it had this pure divine essence to it that I literally felt like I was making love to my reality. I I was blowing my mind. And so this 1221 portal is bringing through some pretty intense energies, but in the softest way. Because this... This wasn't scary for me at all. This wasn't hard to handle. It was just like the movement was so curvy and it was like this snake. My body wanted to move like in the snake like rhythm. And I, it just, it moved me. Like everything came alive. Like the sacral chakra was completely 
blasted wide open with abundance codes and worthiness and beauty. And I'll tell you this, never in my life have I ever been so in love with myself than I was in that moment and during this Kundalini awakening. And I was like, oh my gosh, why, why don't we feel like this all the time? And of course, now that I've experienced it, I'm trying to channel it into my every day because it's there. It's not like, it's not like this thing that just comes in and leaves, you know, it's already in each and every one of us. It just has to be awakened. It needs to be expanded. It needs to be brought into the light. So the energies of this 1221 portal, um, I feel assisted my awakening uh, to some degree. I think part of it, although I was already being prepped for it, I was already being prepped for it through the womb of activation that I had through the meditation I did where I was channeling some information from my guide, Niet, and she was sharing with me, I have at least 25 minutes of recording of what I um, need to share in the course. Uh, and it's a lot of it has to do with the sexual energy. And so much of it was under, I make, so much of it was made more understand, like understood. I'm not even speaking properly. <laughs> There's just like, the depth of understanding of what the goddess frequency actually is now is so far beyond anything I ever understood before. So far beyond my comprehension. I mean, I always thought, oh, yeah, goddess mode, goddess codes, like whatever, you know, like goddess energy. Um, no, no, <laughs> no. Um, it, it is a power to be reckoned with. And I now understand why the woman has been held back shamed into submission for not centuries, but millennia by religion, spirituality, whatever you want to call it. Um, I now understand why. And of course I will discuss all of that in further details, but there's, There's something about when we go into this Mars-like energy coming up in 2023, right? Aries, North Node moves into Aries. Aries is ruled by Mars. Mars is very aggressive, wants to go after what it wants, but it's also very passionate. Um, there are ways of going about getting what you want, but when you are in the goddess mode, it's so much easier. And things just kind of move into place. Like I was shown how to weave through different dimensions, a reality you wish to create. And I saw all these different dimensions and I saw how my guides, the spirit was showing me like how it all works. I literally got behind the scenes visions showing me how everything works energetically beyond what we understand in this dimension to make reality change in this dimension. And when you're in goddess mode, and I'm not saying that Mars energy, the masculine energy doesn't have a role because it absolutely does. Don't mistaken that I am throwing the baby out with the bathwater here. All I'm saying is, is that I understand now a power that has been unleashed within me that I didn't know was possible. And the goddess energy is very much tied to the sexual energy. Now, if you go back to a few months ago, I had a journey with mushrooms in August and I shared that I was shown the pyramids of Egypt and I understood they showed me Kundalini like energy. And the message that I got there was that I am to remember the power of the feminine, sacral, sexual energy. Everything is coming into place now. I've had a few journeys that have really kind of put some puzzle pieces. The big picture is now being shown to me. And I can see how I started to crack open something. And I'm through 
um, journeys and then my own meditations and my own downloads that I'm getting in between the journeys and like what's coming through. It's like, I, I'm amazed. I'm amazed at what's being downloaded and coming through. It's so I feel like powerful isn't the right word because it's, it's sacred. It's, it's just how it was always intended to be. And there's so much shame trapped within all of us around this energy. And when we think about inner child healing, Shame is the wound of the solar plexus chakra. For any of you guys in my inner child course, you'll know I go through all the woundings of each chakra for the inner child. And the shame is the one in this in the solar plexus, which is around like your identity, how you express yourself, how you stand up for yourself. Okay, so okay, okay, okay. Downloads coming in right now. Because our solar plexus is going to be activated in 2023. The shame component, the wounding is also going to be activated for those of us who more, it'll be activated more so for those who haven't really done a tremendous amount of healing within that area. Uh, But I think we're all going to have an activation of that wound to some degree. And it's about this shame. Like I'm not allowed to be who I am. I'm, you know, I need to be someone else. Like, what if I do want to stand up for myself? What if I do want to have boundaries and not be, res- and I'm not respected for that. Like maybe like I'm asking for too much. Like there's just the shame, you know, like, am I, am I deserving of this? Do I even have a right to ask for this? Do, does my voice deserve to be heard? Do you know, my words even matter. And I say that because the solar plexus is also tied into um, the throat chakra. And so the, the solar plexus energy, ah, this is why we're getting a soft yellow coming in. Okay. This is why there's soft yellows coming in through this 1221 portal is to help, um, catalyze, stimulate in a very soft healing way to balance out the shame component within the wound of the solar plexus chakra. Now, where I'm going with all of this is when you are, when we talk about the sacral energies of the abundance codes, right? Your abundance codes are where you're are, are lying in your sacral chakra. The sacral chakra is also the home of the feminine. Okay. It is the home of the inner child, but you think about the womb is in the sacral chakra. And in order for you to be able to create in a way that is, sorry, I am, it's just kind of coming through me right now. I'm trying to really put it all together. We have so much shame around our sexual energy that it doesn't allow us to fully create and tap into the power, which power is used through the solar plexus. So this is okay. So there's a, there's a tie here between the solar plexus and the sacral being activated right now. So understanding who you are, understanding your purpose, understanding your worth through the individual basis of your uniqueness, wanting to separate yourselves from the collective, not from an egoic perspective, but knowing that you have an individuality here to express that is uniquely yours to not necessarily blend in with everyone else. It doesn't mean that you're not still connected. It just means you're willing to honor your own individuality and those gifts that make you uniquely you. There is a strong tie to this and the Sophia codes that are coming through this 1221 portal, softening the solar plexus so that when the activation happens in 2023, 
the power is coming with the enhancement of goddess energy. So it, of course, the goddess energy is water. Mars energy is fire. Aries is fire. So what it is doing is it's helping to balance so that the fire doesn't get out of control, right? Um, it's keeping the fire at a really steady um, pace and intensity so that you don't just burn scorch the earth. You know, it's like, this is not about going scorched earth. Okay. In your energy for next year. Although I think we're going to see that energy come up in people, um, and in communities, um, that's not where we want to be because it, It's acting out a wound that is calling for healing right now. Calling for healing right now. Interesting. Interesting. So important to mellow out and mitigate the hardness through these soft, feathery, pillowy energies that are coming through 1221. I want to say that, again... This will be the year where you're called to show up. There's no more hiding behind the scenes. There's no more, well, I'm not ready yet. It's time to step out whether you're ready or not. Uh, it's time to see what you're really made of. And when I say that, I mean, in whatever area of your life that you've been experiencing these challenges or feeling really called to step forward in some way, it could be in your own expression. It could be in allowing yourself to be more vulnerable. It could be a whole host of different things. But this is the year where you really stand out and allow your individuality to be seen. This is about the individual journey, but in relation to what is best for all, because we will have um, the you know, the Pluto moving into Aquarius in March, starting to hit that theme. You, you will do very well to stay open to these energies over the next couple of days. And let them speak to you. Ask what you need to know. Ask what the energies want to communicate to you individually at this time what is good for your journey what are you meant to utilize this energy for where are you being guided to what is awakening within you and there is a creation effect happening there is a creation effect so with green pink and yellow energies we're talking heart solar plexus and we're also talking high heart, but I want to say we're also talking sacral because I've been seeing when I was in the, when I had my womb activation, all of the colors that I saw when I was in the womb space were orange, pink, and like orange, pink, fuchsia, purple kind of colors. And so there's something within the womb space of us all. Again, men, you have the energetic womb that is calling into this reality. Remember, you can take action through the solar plexus, but what is created comes through the womb, the sacral um, chakra. You may feel like you need permission. This is a wound of the sacral chakra where you don't feel like you're allowed to or that you need permission and I want to say the only permission you need is from you. Do not look for outside validation. Do not wait for someone to tell you it's go time. You are the one who holds the reins here. So don't look for outside validation. Don't look for the person or someone to tell you it's the right time. You know it's the right time. You don't need permission and needing permission or waiting for permission is a wound of the sacral chakra that dampens your creative flow, the flow of these energies that really make you super powerful. 
So I think at this time where we would really benefit is being in a very soft, gentle, compassionate place, state of being, and to temper any energies of outrage, outbursts, um, anger at this time, not because those aren't valid at times, but take it as almost like a test run. See how you can work with these energies before you're really thrown into the mix, before you're really thrown into the fire. Okay. I think I want to leave it there for now. This podcast isn't going to be a super long episode, but I do want to say for any of you who are interested in the womb of activation, uh, really unlocking and unleashing the goddess codes and the frequencies and the keys within you for not just high intuition activation, accessing the Akashic, accessing all the answers to the universe, but to take your creative manifestation abilities to a level so far beyond what I've ever known it to be. And I, I actually consider myself a decent manifester, you know, like I've always been able to manifest things pretty easily, but this is like, whoa, the, the techniques, the, what I was shown to do. So cool. And, and then the explanation behind it all, the why, the why is so wild. So I highly recommend, um, that, if you're interested, don't miss it live. <clears throat> the link for that is in the description below. And know that whatever we're heading into for 2023, it's part of our journey. And I think we're all going to crush it. <laughs> I think there's a lot of opportunity to crush it. Doesn't mean we won't have challenges and it won't be intense, but, um, steady, 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 steady will win the race. Steady will allow you to get further along. It will allow for less mistakes, which can be very time consuming and can cause a lot of confusion or exhaustion, even frustration, which all can lead to an overpowering of the energies that I think we're going to see, be seeing more of uh, next year, starting in the springtime, but really amping up um, the summer. So let these energies percolate, absorb, let them permeate your being over the next few days. Uh, and let me know how it goes. Let me know what you received in the comments uh, below this video. Again, in the Q&A on Spotify, I'd love to hear from you. I read them all. And guys, have a very happy holidays. Next week, I have the ladies from Spirit Calling back on the show, Lisa and Pamela. We're going to be going through some 2023 predictions from their end, what they've been getting coming through. And we're also going to go into a few other topics that are very... Um, I think are going to be very helpful for you heading into the new year. So my final episode for 2022 is next Tuesday. Don't miss it. And guys, I wish you all the happiest holidays. I hope you're spending the time in the way that you wish to, however that is, if that's with family, friends, alone, whatever it is, I wish you so much joy, so much prosperity and activate those goddess codes within because you will not be sorry they are next level and i can't wait to extrapolate on that more with all of you in the new year i love you and have an amazing holiday thanks again for joining me for another show on the enlighten up podcast I love you guys so much for all of your continued support. So remember to raise your vibe, find your tribe, and be open to the infinite possibilities held in the mysteries that surround us all. Thanks again for sharing the show with your family and friends. And if you're new to the show and you need to find out more information about me, please head on over to my website, NicoleFrolic.com, where you can join my newsletter. And please follow me on Instagram, Telegram, and 
YouTube. Keep your light bright and I'll see you next week.